G'day, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com and with that metal station. And I'm getting to have a chat with Jamie Kling and Taylor Nordberg. You may have caught the interview I'd done with them last year um, for Crank, but now I'm doing it with Crank and that metal station. So cheers, guys, for joining me. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Uh, absolute pleasure, man. Um, the Gore Gang EP come out yesterday. Long live the grime, man. That is ripping, dude. I've had it for a couple of weeks, and I was really excited to be able to crank a track as soon as it dropped last night. So, man, really Thanks, cool. Man. Fuck yeah, man. Yeah, it's been pretty exciting uh, being able to release that on our own. That was kind of one of our first official self-release albums, so that was kind of a fun process. Yeah, when did you start working on that? Was that around the time that I had a chat with you for four last year or? Probably, we were probably, I mean, we wrote the songs uh, maybe even before that, um, but they kind of sat for a while while we did Massacre and he's had Venom Ink stuff and, you know, the Absence album and so on and so forth. Um, But yeah, we finished it up last year sometime during the pandemic. I can't even keep all the stuff straight anymore. I don't even know what band we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that um, Gore Gang EP is a ripping EP. Oh, as I was Gorgang. saying, yeah, as I was saying to Taylor, I, I played Long Live the Grime last night on the show, man. It's, it's fucking cranks out death metal, man. Just fucking pure death metal joy for me, man. And it's one of those yeah, albums that kind of for people slip under the radar, but it's just an exceptional, exceptional fucking listen and one people oh, need you. to add to their death metal collection. And it must be good for you not to to, to play drums as well because you got Taylor over on drums for that, amateur. Uh, <laughs> man, that is the literal best. It's the best when it's like, I don't have to play drums? Cool, all right. <laughs> I mean, we all like the sound of our own voice, I guess, but at some point it's like, ah, oh, okay, man. It's nice. It's nice to be like, yeah, he's the fucking drummer in that band. And what's real cool about that band is we write, uh, we write everything, uh, drums are done first, and then everything else is written to that. So literally the drums are the boss of Gore Gang. It's like the lead songwriter is the drums, and we we make it make cool patterns and have them go together, and then it's like, you know, we may or may not be like, well, maybe this should go like that, but it just kind of is the boss. So it's like an incredibly like creative way of, uh, you know, being, and I don't have to play. So that's a big plus. <laughs> uh, what was it like making this album? You used to just do that in the studio at home there or? Yeah, pretty much. I think we demoed out like 10 or 12 songs actually. Um, and then we just decided to just do an EP for right now. Um, yeah, we got inspired by a Dimension Zero they had done an EP and it was four songs, maybe five songs. I don't know if they had a cover. Do you remember if they had a cover? I don't think so. No cover. And they did live ones. We had some canned live stuff. So it was like, oh, okay, well, fuck yeah, man. Let's go ahead and just let's, put an EP out. For yeah. The meantime, let's do an EP out and then we'll, we'll wait and we'll do a proper one. We'll see how this one goes and we'll just do a, a proper full length, which we, like he said, we already had written 12 songs. Which band are we talking about again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it was a, it's a really really good EP, and I was fucking I was pretty wrapped to get my hands on on that one as well. And yeah. they got the white zombie cover in there as well, I believe. It's so yeah. dirty, man. It's yeah. so dirty. We did a video here. My wife filmed it, and she's uh she's got lots of models that are around, and she put out kind of like a casting call, like a feelers, like. Anybody want to do like a gothic kind of go-go dancing uh, uh, white zombie video? And uh, Karina, which is her buddy, hit her back and was like, yes, I'm in. And then like that girl watched uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. She watched uh, The the Devil uh, Three three from Shit. hell yeah, yeah, three <laughs> like from a, hell. a proper Devil's grandpa yeah. Devil's Rejects. Yeah. anyway so she watched all those only listened to white zombie and was like fully fucking prepped for the part and we shot some i had to go buy a set of fucking aviators for the video i'm like man i would be doing rob zombie well pardon me i would be doing white zombie a disservice to not be wearing some fucking aviators in this video <laughs> you can see where you can see where my priorities are at right I'm yeah like, man it, it came out check <laughs> it came out really well man and like i implore everyone who's listening to this loves their death metal gotta go check out gore gang if you haven't yet um in oh, human yeah. condition man i've been getting a lot of buzz about that i shared um the, the rat god single with crank and that and 
the, um, the rack got announcement. I mean, the uh, fucking tracker listing and everything is when he's done that as well. And the tarantula track, man, bloody rips, dude. I'm looking forward to how this goes, man. And you got Terry Butler on board as well, guys. So um, when did you first conceive in human condition? I know you've got about 20, 30 bands on the roll and I didn't want to announce them all at the start there but i know you're super busy and i know you've got a lot on the on your plate as well but when did you conceive the idea for um in human condition can you tell me a little bit about that um well jeremy and i were playing in massacre um at the end of 2019 and uh we joined and pretty much wrote a whole album and then some for the band that was going to be the new album yeah we even tracked our yeah, parts we, we tracked everything Guitar, something drums here, had it all ready to roll. Yeah, that was done November 2019. Drums were done and guitars were done. Yeah. And then uh, pretty much just sat most of the year. And then through unfortunate situations, we had to exit that situation. Yeah, uh, yeah. about a year later. So around September was when uh, Taylor and I formally left uh, Massacre. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the long and the short is we're like bigger, better, you know, From Beyond was killer. Great record um all homage to the uh floridian death metal scene and good luck best of luck but we had all these tunes and we were kind of just sitting there like what the fuck do we do with these you know yeah. because i mean it was written to be a massacre record so when people are like wow this sounds like massacre and it's well uh <laughs> yeah i mean Successful. we were we were trying to write it was written for a massacre record so uh immediately afterwards uh, after we split um uh, I've known Terry for a very long time, like uh, 15 years, something like that. And it was kind of like, you know, hey, what happened? You know, he's like, I went down a similar road. You know, what happened with you? So we just compared notes, shared stories. And uh, he was like, I'd love to hear some of the music that you guys had. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. Um, so I, I don't remember what I shot him. Probably Tyrantula because that fucking groove is just like. <laughs> right. And uh he was like, man, this is fucking killer. And was like, oh, cool. We didn't know what we were going to do with it. We were just kind of like, uh, well, I don't know. And then I'm like, would you want to play bass on it? You know, that's like a 400 yard, like Hail Mary football throw where you're like, I don't know. We'll see what he says. And he was like, fuck yeah, man. He's like, this is killer. And then Taylor's like, well, do you want to be a band, like a band member? Do you want to, what do, what do we do with this? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? <laughs> he was like, I'm down to like fucking put the shoe on walk around town sell the fish like let's go let's do it so in human condition was born at that moment in time and then we decided jeremy's already an incredible vocalist why don't okay. you just do the vocals and then eliminate a extra person you know in the recording situation and the yeah. band situation and again trying to find good help you know like what we were talking about <laughs> it's yeah kind of you know, I tried to not do it. If I'm being honest, I really tried hard not to do it. I'm like, oh. we could get this guy. Well, we could, or you could just do it. Yeah, and then was, it would be sound good, and it would be done. But I'm like, oh, all right, yeah, yeah. And then like, like a week would pass, and I'm like, oh, what about uh, so and so? And he'd be like, um, you could do it though. And I'm like, all right, all right. All right. It, okay. It came, it came out well. It came out really well. Your vocals sit good. And that Tarantula track, man, I love when fucking Taylor kicks in with that riff kind of, and it just fucking to, halfway through the track towards the end there, just boom. And you just, again, you're like, thank you so yeah. much, man. <laughs> it, it, it was hard not to get into it. Yeah. Hell yeah. What was it like making the album? Can you tell me a little bit about that process? Yeah. Uh, well, it was, it was pretty quick. I mean, most of the songs were written and or demoed out in about a month. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jeremy would help with arrangement. And we kind of went through and said, well, maybe let's take the bridge section of this song and swap it with this. And maybe let's do a different chorus for this song or whatever. So we just did some arranging and jammed some songs out, him and I. Um, and then he tracked all his drums in November of 2019 and then in one day. <laughs> we, we each had a Based. whole pot of coffee that day yeah each of us so that's two pots of coffee for two guys that's one whole pot of like 12 cups of coffee it was brutal by the end of the day it was like ah, ah. he's like he's like man my he's like i'm sweating over here I was like you're sitting down for hours you shouldn't be sweating <laughs> yeah i think coffee powered me through most of 2020 and now 2021 yeah, oh, yeah. everything that's been happened it's just fuck how are you 
keep yourself super Just motivated like that, you know what I mean? Because he's a ripping out like punk projects, and um, you know, you got these death metal goes bands going, and but the the way your style of playing suits each band you don't go like you're in four punk and you're just going to play heaps fast just because you can if you know what i mean it reminds me of another musician here and dave, um, dave haley a drummer who is in all these different bands but his style and the way he plays he can same as you guys he's play suited to each band you know what i mean thank you that's cool yeah we like to try to flex our chameleon i guess talent or yeah. boundaries i guess yeah it's a it's just it's testing it because yeah. i don't know i like lots of different styles of music and i like drummers in uh, lots of different styles like the drummer for no effects or the drummer for pennywise uh, or uh phil collins or uh jeff Picaro, or uh you know drummers all over the map you know like guys who were like you know bring a different vibe to it so i mean it's like I mean, if you drop Stuart Copeland into Rush, it wouldn't work. And if you drop Stuart Copeland into Rush, uh, I mean, if you in the inverse of that, it wouldn't work. It it just would be a different band, which is cool, but it would it just wouldn't work. So I like trying to like be like both of them and go, okay, well, what what made this this? Like, what vibe does the punk band needs this type of vibe? And like, I mean, I grew up listening to punk, so it wasn't like too hard to go okay, I, this needs to sound like the early Blink-182 or the early No Effect stuff or the early Lagwagon. It's got to have, it's got to have this fucking vibe, you know, which is totally different than, let's say, Bill Andrews from Massacre. He's like straight on it. It's more like, it's more gritty and more toothy and less, uh, you know, <laughs> Lombardo <laughs> back there, you know, which is, uh, I guess, I guess that's about I guess it. he's pretty Lombardo too. He's yeah. pretty Lombardo. Yeah, so so what what's it been like through twenty twenty for you guys? I know you've had the music and all these bands like keeping you super busy and all these projects and that. Um, now starting things are starting to open up. Are they the same in the US? Things starting to open up in the US. He's looking forward to to getting back into some live shows, maybe for In Human Condition, and then the the, the twenty other projects he's got going at the moment as well. Yeah. Hell yeah. We actually, uh, we just played our first show with Inhuman Condition uh, about two weeks ago. We played a little club show here Tell in me. Florida with Deicide. What yeah. was that like? Tell me it all. Was, it was so nice to be back at a show at a venue and people are, everybody's got black shirts on. Yeah. Everybody's hanging out in the parking lot. It was a little weird for the first hour. It was like, I don't know what to do with my hands, you know, because you have like, we haven't been around each other for a fucking year. But then after, you know, it just all gelled back in and it was awesome it was a great everybody was so excited to be there all the bands were so excited to be on stage yeah everybody, everybody was supportive of you know buying merch and that's good actually watching all the bands and stuff it was great that's really oh, good because yeah. i want to see that for all the scenes worldwide people getting along and supporting their local scene getting along to shows like yours and you know buying merch as well i know it's weird i know it was weird the first show i went back to um after COVID, people standing around, a guy come up to me, he's like, Can I mosh? And I'm like, Yeah, I was close, go for it. It was like it was a bit weird, but it was it was fun and it was really good to, to get amongst it. And it's uh, over here in Australia, we've started really pl getting selling out shows, which has been really great to see. I know one was just announced in Adelaide here and Froth and Fest from Truth Corroded with um Jason North and that he's put it on and it 50% sold out in one day. I was like, shit, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's the way to do it. And it's really good for people yeah. to get along and support the scene. I know it was really hard through 2020, but I bought a fucking lot of merch and discovered a lot of bands and records, like with your vinyl collection back there. It's like, dude, yeah. it's yeah. ways to support the scene if you can get to the shows. Yeah, yeah. man, we've, we've been doing the same. We've been buying, uh, like the new Gojira came in the mail today. Yeah. Um, realized they don't need help, but they do need help. <laughs> so uh, that came in the mail. We've been buying vinyls left and right we've been buying merch and shirts and uh fucking picks you know whatever you name it just trying to help 
some of these bands support. Like, I mean, I bought a pair of uh, sweatpants from Origin. I live in fucking Florida and I bought a pair of sweatpants. <laughs> that's, no. that's in the indication of, you know, I was like, well, I want those. And I'm like, all right, you know, what am I going to do with them? I'll cut them into shorts and then you can't read that they're Origin. I guess there's no point then. <laughs> yeah. and, and you got Rackard dropping on um, June 4th, I believe. Have you got anything, um, you're going to do any shows for that now you can play? Or have you got anything else set pre that you want to announce uh we probably won't have a show before then yep. i mean who knows anything could happen yep. yes we talked about maybe doing like a listening party or a, maybe like a stream hangout or something um but we might have a show possibly in july it might be booked uh next week maybe so yeah what else has got on the cards that you can talk about because i know he's got a fair bit going at the moment what are you able to talk about band wise what's going on with the absence yeah lots there yeah yeah yeah. we have a new record coming out uh june 25th i believe yeah a lot of albums coming out trying to keep all the dates <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i think that comes out the 25th of june on m theory uh our first single choirs of sickness is out and that had yeah, a video I've seen that yeah um, that's killer we have another one coming out in two weeks i don't know if i was allowed to say that yet but who cares oh yeah well, <laughs> yeah it's, it's all right we're, we're aussies no one will no one will notice what we're saying anyway it's all good <laughs> 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 yeah no that's Uh-oh. that's really cool man are, are you going to be playing live he's going to um any announcements maybe keep tuned see what happens yeah, yeah. nothing nothing planned yet yep. um probably with that band it probably will be closer to the end of the year or early next year just yeah. given everybody's schedule and everything yeah and um, we definitely will hit the road when it opens back up <laughs> whenever the road is the road yeah be- that's the thing like it's going to be hard for internationals i know what you know like a lot of people are going oh i'd love for so and so to come to australia or you know it's probably same in america you know but at the moment i think we got to get the the live scenes going and everyone get along to the locals i'm just saying before that everyone get along to these shows and fucking really support them you know what i mean yeah uh the, from from that experience we just had it was like metal is alive and well you know and then we released the uh the pre-sales for um rat god and we were like blown away by the fact that metal is very alive and very well and doing very well and uh gojira is doing killer uh the new cannibal corpse is fucking charting i mean it's it's insane like they're up there with like greta van fleet and fucking taylor swift taylor death swift metal's been there. good hasn't it death metal's been really really fucking good man 2020 21 i um dove into some ripping death metal albums this inhuman condition gore gang but then you had cadaver benediction and then you had end seeker out of germany they dropped that album mount carcass i think the same day as cannibal corpse and it kind of just slipped under there but it was a a ripping death metal album as well it's oh, i have to check that out yeah, yeah, oh, yeah it's it's really good to see death metal kicking ass everyone fucking rack god drops june 4th you all got to get that from inhuman condition um fucking terry butler you ought to call him on walter's wall of woe i'm sure he's going to replay that again later in the week uh mm-hmm. jamie taylor thank you very much i want to talk soon next time you've got something to chat about man this has been absolute pleasure man i look forward to next time we're chatting man um oh, yeah. track, track from gore gang pick a track from gore gang each man i can chuck with a show uh I'm going to go with the live false flags. Ooh, awesome. I'm going to go uh, born slave death. Awesome. Absolute pleasure, guys. Everyone grab long live the grime. Everyone fucking chuck in your pre-orders for inhuman condition. Rack God. They've just dropped another hundred vinyl. I believe it was, man. They're selling really bloody quick. So get your hands on it. Don't mess around. Chuck in some pre-orders. Jamie Taylor. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure, guys. You have a lovely day. Thank you, buddy. Thank you man. Cool. That soon. Cheers.